Hey there people, it is Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here, back with a, another interview with an ex-vegan that is known as Lovely Isabella, as you can see her there, thanks for joining us. And she was vegan for around six years and she wants to share her own personal story with how it ended up making her health massively deteriorate in so many different ways and how she managed to get to the point to wake up to the reality that the vegan diet was the thing that was causing her health issues and symptoms that she had going on. And then she ended up transitioning after a six year period on the vegan diet to a carnivore diet and regaining her health. And if you wanna check her out on Instagram, I'll put a link down below for her Instagram and YouTube. She's known as the Steak and Butter Girl, which yeah. is a really cool name. So yeah. So yeah, the first question I would like to ask you is what were the reasons that you first made the decision to go towards veganism? Uh, so it was last year of high school. I was a senior around 18 years old and I was just surfing YouTube, uh, learning about this fad vegan diet. And I came across this YouTuber called Freely the Banana Girl, who I'm, uh. I'm sure you know, right? <laughs> And her boyfriend, Durian Ryder, they were like really big on YouTube at the time. And I saw her body and how happy she was, you know, like that was my dream body. And she would be preaching the vegan diet, how like raw till four, eating raw until 4 p.m., eating starches. So I tried it and I actually lost some weight. So I just thought this works for me. So that's how I started. It was for vanity reasons for weight loss. Ah, okay, for sure. And would you say there? So, you got into it for the vanity reasons, and obviously, I guess, yeah, maybe you wanted to feel a bit better. But yeah. as you got further into the vegan diet, did you find that you ended up sticking to a vegan diet for other different reasons that you maybe learnt along the way about all the other different aspects of the veganism and what they preach? Yeah, so besides weight loss, which is what I thought was the best benefit, um, I thought it would also heal my acne. So I had hormonal acne in high school all throughout the four years, cystic hormonal acne, um, puss filled, very painful. So I was just desperate to heal the acne. Um, and for a, quite a while, the vegan diet did help with the acne. It started helping with the inflammation, but over time, it never truly went away. Uh -huh. Um, but what else I did? Uh, so weight loss skin, like that's pretty much it. I started when I was young, you yeah, know, okay. and it's reasons. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. would you now looking back on it, would you say that the reason why it started to help improve the acne, even though it didn't go away fully, would you say that it could possibly be because you removed a lot of the crap from your diet that you're eating? on your diet yes. previously. I do think so. Before I went vegan, I was eating a lot of different junk food, chips, oils, um, a lot of salty foods, um, and the things that I mom, that my mom cooked, but they were all filled with different soy sauces, gluten, um, things that I just didn't know exactly where they came from. So yes, going vegan, I did focus on whole foods. I didn't eat the vegan crap, none of ah. the, none of those packaged foods I still stuck with whole foods so of course I felt a huge difference in how my body felt yeah for sure without a doubt and it's like so many people when they get on the vegan diet especially a whole food plant-based one they're like oh it resolved this thing and this issue and this issue that I had going on but actually yeah. a lot of the time it seems to be at least from the ex-vegans that I keep interviewing that they come to the realization well actually it wasn't necessarily the vegan diet that healed me it was like my body not having to deal with all the crap that I was eating in my diet previously yeah. before eating a vegan diet right it was the elimination of those junk foods yeah okay so yeah, you got some benefits and you got into it for the reasons that you mentioned and you ended up sticking it out for six years. So how was your whole six year journey? Did you stick on the raw till four diet or how did it change over a period of time for you? Right. In the beginning, first two years, I was 
religiously doing raw till four. So I would eat tons of fruits until 4 p.m. Right when it was 4 p.m., I would go to starches and rice. Those were my favorites, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and white rice. And I would eat loads of all of that. I would have so much bloating. So I started to question, why is my stomach so huge all the time? I can't wear tight clothes, you know? <laughs> and so I discovered the raw diet, the raw fruitarian type yeah. of, yeah. yes. So I also tried that, just bananas, like eating 50 bananas a day and being so nauseous, but believing that, okay, my bloating will go away, I'll poop it all out anyways. Um, and it was just horrible. So I did raw and then raw to four. Uh, okay. And would you say the reason why you went from raw to four, obviously you learned from Freely and Durian Rider more specifically Freely, and then you ended up on like what they would call the 30 bananas a day diet at least that's what they call yeah. it and you thought it would help resolve your issues would you say that it's just they had programmed you and brainwashed you a lot for you watching their videos on youtube and them saying like the vegan diet is the best diet and you thought that you could possibly resolve those bloating issues that you had going on and you thought maybe that Maybe I need to take it from one extreme, you could say, to another. We're going towards the fully raw veganism diet, but it necessarily didn't give you the results that you desired. Exactly. I, I did definitely get brainwashed. I was naive and I was young. I was lazy also to do the research, right, to actually discover if this is truly real. Um, I was just so obsessed with the things that they would put out on media and I would religiously just copy what they do, believing that their results will mirror into my results. And I think that is a huge mistake of followers and subscribers. They just go with what whoever they're subscribed to does and they copy them, believing that what happens to them will of course happen to me, but everyone is different. So everyone has to experiment things will work for you, things may not. Yeah, I think that's a really good point to make and that's obviously what you realize through your own experience is like you was listening to, I guess what you could say, people outside of yourself that seem to be trustworthy sources that necessarily are not necessarily always the most trustworthy sources because not everyone's always been honest about what they're doing on the vegan diet. And that you started to become really out of tune with more what your body was telling you was good for you so you weren't really listening to your internal navigation system would you say you was listening more outside of yourself yeah definitely i was just not in tune with who i was again i was just very obsessed with losing weight being skinny looking pretty and you know thinking back it's understandable i was a teenager i was just trying to copy my friends but as you grow older, you start to discover what exactly you want with your career, with your life, what exactly you're supposed to prioritize, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'd like to go a bit more on to Freely because I think it's really good, especially for young girls to hear because I know for years she's just like putting photos of herself on Instagram and looking so lean and wearing hardly any clothes. And I guess, would, would you say from your own personal experience that, yeah, she obviously is not a bad person. She's trying to do a good thing, but by doing a lot of what she'd done with what I've just mentioned, that it can make girls maybe feel bad about themselves and try and follow what she's doing, which necessarily isn't a good thing for them. And it can have a negative impact on their self image and maybe their self love and that. What, what would your personal view on experience be with that? Um, so I currently don't know what she's posting, but if she's still posting her body, like, wearing barely any clothes, then she's going the route of sexualizing her body and trying to sell um, vanity things, right? To sell her looks and to convince girls that if they want to look like her, they should just go vegan, which is such a huge mistake. Instead, she should be focusing on mental health, on actual physical health, not on like the appearance. So of course, I do not support that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for sure. And would you say that following the vegan diet did actually have a negative effect on your mental health in the long run. Oh, most definitely. I preach this all the time. One of the biggest issues that I have suffered is mental health. Okay. I develop anxiety, you know. I am a musician, so I'm performing all of the time. So I need my mind to be very calm, especially when I'm on stage. And I noticed um, the more uh, further I was in, 
to the vegan diet, I noticed going on stage, I would have a lot of anxiety. I would feel so nervous. Um, and I know that has to do with my diet. It's not with how much I practice and how I'm ready. Um, I can be practicing so many hours every day, but yet I would still feel those nerves. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, apart from those negative effects you had gone, so we're going to this fully now, what other negative effects did you notice like mentally, emotionally, and physically after a, a period of time? And when, and, and can you recollect when you first started to notice that you wasn't feeling good on a vegan diet, how long everything started to take to go downhill? Right, so by year five, I already lost my period. And if that wasn't a big enough sign, I still ignored it for another two years. Wow. Um, yeah, I lost my period and that affects a woman's body greatly. My hormones were completely out of whack. I was starting to break out a lot during my period when my period came before and during, I would have huge breakouts. That's not fun. Um, and I noticed my hair was shedding a lot in the shower. Uh, so that just shows lots of deficiencies. By year six, I went to get a blood test, complete full panel blood test. And my doctor finally sat me down and told me that I had some extreme deficiencies and it's time to either take supplements or just eat some animal foods. Wow, okay, and it's very interesting because uh, you're the second person I've interviewed now that said that they still had acne issues on a vegan diet, yet vegans will say once you remove the dairy, the acne goes away, which it does for some people, but it's not the case for every single person. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it has to do with all of the plants that I was eating. I'm sure you've done the research of oxalates in plants yeah. and how horrible they are to skin and pretty much every organ in your body so going carnivore literally just the elimination of oxalates has done so much for my skin my hair and my health in general yeah okay cool and were there any other negative effects that you noticed how are your energy levels how is your mood how are your stress levels like how are you yeah were there any other negative effects that you had mm, yes during uh being a vegan i would um you know be constantly hungry obviously because the foods are just not satiating um, especially if I'm eating salads I would just not feel full and if I did feel full after just an hour I would be hungry again so how did that affect me, me negatively is when I'm in school and I'm trying to study or be in class and focus I would always have thoughts of eating I I find it hard to just focus so my mental clarity is always not completely there because I'm always thinking about food I'm hungry I'm not satiated and that really affects someone's mind really badly um, on top of that my energy was a lot of highs and lows so a lot of crashes of course because of the sugar highs from all the fruit and the rice and then hours later I would feel like just hell um, my mood was very sporadic, just very all over the place. I wasn't uh, anywhere near where I am now, like just stable mood, very calm, knows exactly what I'm feeling at the moment, just mindful. Wow, okay, so yeah, it's, it really started to have a negative impact on your whole life. And would you say, because you weren't getting satiated and the diet wasn't working for you so well and your health started going down, would you say that so much of your time, focus and energy was upon diet and food as a whole. And would you say that it started to consume a lot of your life so you didn't have as much focus on other more important things in life? For sure, 100%. It was definitely consuming my life and my thoughts. All of my energy was in the kitchen, just cooking vegan stuff. Um, and yeah, I just didn't have much time to discover who I was to further build my musicianship. Um, so yes, I regret all of that time and energy wasted on this freaking vegan diet. Yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah, obviously you've got all these negative effects and what got you to the point where you started to really question the vegan diet? Uh, like, yeah, what, what happened with that? Uh, honestly, when I started seeing other vegans going, not like quitting vegan, when I saw other vegans starting to eat meat, and when I saw vegans going full carnivore, that's actually how I discovered the carnivore diet from other uh, vegans. Okay. 
Yeah, so of course I wasn't brave enough because I already set this example as this really humane vegan girl trying to tell all my friends, oh, it's good for the earth, it's good for the animals, be kind, you know? So of course it's a huge and difficult step to finally start eating meat. Um, but again, I also had dreams of eating meat, eating eggs, and oh, I know that's, wow. yeah, that's because my body was seriously craving that stuff. Wow, so your body got to a point where it's severely deficient and it was like trying to give you strong signals and signs of like, we need these foods. Yes, every moment it can. <laughs> wow, wow. So that's, so would you say you, because you wasn't feeling so good, you were just keeping your mind open to the possibilities of maybe other things and yeah, like you said, you started to discover that other vegans were resolving their health issues for eating animal foods, so it started helping you maybe go through a process where you started opening up to the possibility of eating animal foods to regain your health so you can feel the best you could feel. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very thankful to those vegans who made the first step to eat meat and for sharing their story, that's a very brave thing. Yeah, and would you say you had to go through sort of like a deprogramming or reprogramming with the whole vegan brainwashing so you had so you're able to actually be open-minded enough and be ready to actually start eating animal foods again. Yes, it's again very difficult to just step out of that, that mindset, out of that box that the only way is the vegan way. Um, so that was the hardest part, to just convince myself that it is okay to start eating some meat. Um, but once I crossed that line, I pretty much was in heaven because I'm sure you felt it when that first bite of meat went into your mouth. For me, I felt like I was elevating. I felt something just changed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I definitely can relate to that. And it's, it's amazing to hear that as a very similar experience to you. So, yeah. When you started making this switch, would you also say that it was quite sort of an emotional process for you to go through, especially because you'd been like an ethical vegan where you didn't want to harm animals. Because I know for me and a lot of other people, it can actually be hard due to having a connection to the animals and feeling bad about eating them at first. Yes, um, I thought initially um, eating meat is bad for the earth, but after some research, it's actually quite the contrary. Eating meat helps the earth, right? In fact, eating vegan is very harmful for the earth so just that alone was like okay so at least I'm not destroying the earth eating some meat that definitely helped my mind uh, okay so you did very similar thing to me and many other ex-vegans is you started to not necessarily just look at to vegans and what they were sharing on what's going on with the diet and the how the diet affects animals in the world you started to look on the other side and start to question what you'd been programmed with and started to re-educate yourself on eating animal foods and necessarily and, and end up going in a direction of learning certain things around eating animal foods that you never knew before. Yes, definitely. And I also learned a lesson of just stop being so stubborn um, and being convinced of one way. Just be open-minded, look at the other sides, the other perspectives, and then evaluate. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of the more conscious ways to make choices without a doubt. It is really good to hear that you managed to go through that type of thing. So, yeah, when you first started switching to animal foods, what was the first animal food that you tried out? And how was that whole experience? So obviously, you shared a little bit about what it was like after the first bite, but how was the experience during it and how did you feel afterwards as well? Yes, so I was... Uh, in New York City when I first decided to take my first bite and it was actually an egg um, and I chose an egg because I feel like it's a little bit easier to digest compared to something as heavy as meat so I just fried up scrambled one egg um, with a little bit of butter and that was my first bite of animal foods okay cool and how did you feel from that while you was eating it and afterwards did you notice significant improvements in many different ways or yes um so i noticed the very first thing was the taste how complex and how delicious it was unlike broccoli which is just disgusting um <laughs> but like that egg was just so it was just so satiating and so comforting um and after that one egg I ate like six more it was just so good and 
at that moment, um, at that time, I was very uh, malnu malnourished. I was just not feeding my body what it needed, obviously. After six years of going vegan, I was deficient, but I also did a lot of um, calorie restricting. So when I went vegan, I promised myself that I would not restrict. If I wanted 12 eggs, if I wanted three pounds of meat, I would just eat it because my body needed it. So that's what I did, and I gained a lot of weight. But that is okay, right? I needed that weight gain, and I got my period back, and now the weight is gone because I allowed my metabolism to heal and I allowed myself to reset my appetite. Wow okay and how long would you say roughly it took you to start seeing your period actually return fully after incorporating animal foods back into your diet? Yes so it was about a full month of eating whenever I was hungry and then it finally came back really quick. Wow so very very quick yeah. so that's <laughs> wow that's amazing yeah. so after you tried that egg, what other foods did you start to experiment with and what benefits did you start to notice from consuming those? So the first three months, I pretty much stuck to eggs, butter, and beef. And in regard to the beef, it was mostly ribeyes or ground beef from Trader Joe's. Okay, cool. And yeah, and, and, and how did you find that those food affected you? Did you find that you got significant benefits from those? Or? Yes. Uh, I noticed that my digestion was a lot better. Immediately, I noticed there was no more bloating. There was no more of that belly. Um, and uh, besides the digestion and the bloating, I noticed that my skin was becoming more moisturized. So that never happens. During winter, my skin would flake like crazy, especially during New York City winter. It's extremely cold. But during that winter, I noticed, wow, I don't need all these heavy creams. My skin is glowing and it's moisturized. And talk about no more pimples. So I'm seeing like all of these results that I've always wanted as a vegan. And I know it sounds cheesy, but honestly, the carnivore diet is really magical in all of the results that I see. Yeah, for sure. And you were getting all of those types of benefits just within a three month period. But the vegan diet within six years, you got some benefits, but it's like, if you'd been on like a carnival diet, it sounds from your own personal experience, the results you would have got from that would have just kept going up and up and up. It would have been an upward trend rather uh -huh. than an up and then a downward trend. Yes, very down. Yeah, but currently I'm 17 months carnivore and it's only going up, up, up. Wow, okay, so that's really good for people to hear because there's a lot of people that say, well, maybe the person's getting benefits because they're newly on a carnivore diet and long term it's actually not a good thing, but you're a person that's been doing it for quite a while and like you said, it's just an upward trend so far. Yes, it really is. And um, I think the biggest thing that I've done right during the carnivore diet was to not restrict. I think that's a big thing is to eat enough. And I know a lot of people tell me on Instagram, but it's so hard to eat enough. I feel so like heavy with all this meat. So it's important to not do intermittent fasting in the beginning and just eat whenever you're hungry. I don't know if you support intermittent fasting. Yeah, I do. But once I switched to a carnival diet, I found because the foods weren't affecting my digestion in a, in a negative way and it weren't affecting me in a negative way of all the plant toxins that I found that I didn't want to do intermittent fasting naturally anymore because the foods were actually making me feel amazing. So it was stopping okay. me from doing any type of restriction because I was just feeling very good. So yeah, I definitely, um, I'm definitely pro intermittent fasting, but there's a time and place for it. Yeah, that's interesting. For me, I didn't do IF in the beginning, and then I realized I felt so full and satiated from the meals I would eat that I would naturally start intermittent fasting. Like, I would just skip some meals until I'm hungry again. Yes, yeah, so it sounds like you've gone through a similar thing to what I thought that I would go through, where it's like you're on a refeeding phase where you're just needing yeah. as much nutrition and as much as food to rebuild and regenerate and give your body all the nutrition it's been lacking for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah cool and how did it affect your hair because you said you was having issues with your hair falling out like yeah yes yeah, so I first want to start off with because I am always on stage I used to always um, tie my hair back in a very tight ponytail and that apparently for women is a huge no-no if you don't want to have like balding here and hair loss um, so over time, after all of those tight ponytails, and I used to have really long hair, I would start balding and my hairline would be receding more and more. 
and oh, it was just so stressful. And the vegan diet obviously didn't help because every time I showered, the hair would just keep falling off. So right now, my hairline is like pretty much back, and yeah. I'm having baby hairs, like so many baby hairs. So that says a lot. I'm growing new hairs. So really happy about that. <laughs> wow, that's amazing to hear because so many people, especially, well, you could say. In the hair loss movement, they say to people, "Well, you can't actually regrow your hair, but you're someone that's proving that you actually can regrow your hair and improve the hair quality at the same time as well." Definitely, I don't even use conditioner. Sometimes no shampoo because I just feel like I don't need to. My hair is just shiny already. Wow. Okay. And how do you now feel on stage compared to before? Because like I said, you was getting very anxious on the vegan diet and finding it very difficult to be on stage. Yeah, yeah. That's something that. Uh, is honestly the greatest benefit from change of diet to carnivore.、Um, I think as a musician, confidence really matters.、Um, just being confident in yourself, in your own personality, your own voice that you put into your music making, and that's something that I've slowly gained and discovered about myself. And that could not have happened if I didn't eat a healthy diet. So I'm now confident when I'm on stage, and I'm brave and courageous to do bold things, which is necessary in the music world. And I'm saying this for all the musicians out there, but it's important to do something special in your music rather than just copying、um, the classics or copying recordings. It's important to be bold, and that goes with every career right now, right? Yeah, for sure. So, alongside that, would you say that it just gives you like more motivation, more energy, more drive to pursue the、oh. things that you want to in life? You're able to face things way more easily without becoming overwhelmed. Yes,、um, I'm just yes, all of that, pretty much all of that. I'm way more focused. I have the mental clarity and the energy to just sit down and practice to get shit done,、um, and I know exactly what I need to prioritize. Compared to before, I just have all this brain fog. I'm lost. Don't really know who I am. So it's really a complete 180 degree change in life and myself. Wow. Okay. So it wasn't just an external process that you've been through. You've also had a massive, like,、mm-hmm. internal rebirthing process. You could say, like you said, it's sort of like maybe that you lost yourself a bit on the vegan diet, and this has made you refine yourself going through this whole transition. Definitely, definitely. I discovered more about myself, and I realized when I was vegan, I wasn't really anybody. I was just following other people's actions.、Um, but now I make decisions for myself. I do things because I actually want to,、um, and all of my actions have purpose and intent. Wow. So yeah, that's really, really amazing to hear. Like, absolute life transformative and self transformative going through this whole thing. Mhm. Yeah.、Wow. And would you just say that you just feel a lot more safer and secure than yourself? You feel a lot more balanced, a lot more grounded. Is this something you've experienced at all? I do. I do feel like that mentally,、um, spiritually. I feel a lot more grounded, and I can also tell you that my friendships and my relationships that I have built during these seventeen months of eating meat. Are way more meaningful than all of the relationships that I built when I was vegan. It really affects you just beyond what you can imagine. Wow, and and human、yeah. connection is like one of the highest human needs for us to live the most healthiest, happiest human experience possible. One hundred percent, yeah. And I met my boyfriend while I was carnivore, so I'm sure that took a lot of my like knowing who I was and what I wanted. So I'm forever grateful for that. Wow! Wow! This, yeah, this is really wow, and that's the thing. Like, obviously, you didn't know you was going to get all these different benefits you're mentioning, but you kept your mind open. You tried it, and then you got so many other benefits. Certain ones that you were looking for, but so many others that you did not even realize that you needed or that you were actually looking for. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm getting way more than I ever imagined. So, forever thankful. Wow! Yeah, and it's and it's really good. You're one of these type of people that have been very open about it because it can be hard for people to be open about it. Going from vegan to、uh, like a meat based diet, and that you're sharing so much information on this through Instagram and other social media platforms.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I get so many、um, ladies messaging me on Instagram who are vegan at the moment, and they're 
begging me to just convince them that it is okay to eat meat because they want to, right? And honestly, I don't really have to say much. All I have to be like is just do it for yourself, for your own health. Look at my page, see how I have really healed and improved. I want that for you. I know you want that for yourself. So just take the leap. You can do it, you know, just yeah. a little confidence. Yeah, for sure, without a doubt. And what would you say that your carnivore diet looks like at a whole, as a whole? Because I know a lot of people would like, like to know about this, but what would you say like the staples are in your diet? And yeah, just what does your carnivore diet look like as a whole at this current moment? Yeah, current moment, 80, 80 to 90% is beef. And that can be whatever's on sale, New York Strip. Um, of course, I love my ribeyes or ground beef if I need to be on a budget. So 90% beef and the other 10% eggs. Um, sometimes I'll have some liver. Nowadays I don't really have it because I feel fine without liver. But eggs, liver, salmon, or whatever fatty fish I can get, um, and cheese. Okay, cool. And why did you feel that you needed liver in the past before? Because it might good, be good for people to be aware of as to why. Uh, so a lot of just watching other carnivores in the community, seeing what they do, hearing the benefits. So I just wanted to give it a try. Initially, I felt like I was feeling great benefits when I ate liver. But when I stopped, I didn't really notice any changes or lack of good results. So I kind of just built the habit of not eating liver. However, I'm still open to eating or bringing it back. I just can't find quality liver right here yeah. where I am. Okay, yeah. it's good for people to be aware of because some people think it's absolutely essential to eat organ meat. Not everyone's drawn to it. Not everyone likes eating it. But like you said, you don't feel it's essential for you to eat it to be all your best. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And yeah, you, you said you consume cheese and fish. What about pork or chicken or any other types of meat? What's your experience with those meats if you've right. eaten them at any time? When I tried chicken, I noticed I didn't feel full as long as beef, so automatically I just didn't eat chicken anymore. Also, I don't really care for the taste. I prefer fattier uh, meats. So pork, if I eat pork, it would only be pork belly. That's about it. Okay, cool. And there is a, is there a reason as to why you prefer to eat higher fat? Because I know some people prefer higher protein or higher fat, or they switch between the two. Like, yeah. yeah um, I guess it's just what my body craves just fat because I noticed whenever I had a leaner cut of beef I just would be wanting more so I noticed if I put some butter on that beef I felt good hence uh, my steak okay yeah which is why I always add butter to steaks that are not fat enough and my standard of fatty beef is like really really fatty I don't really know the ratios but I usually always supplement with extra fat either butter or suet yeah you're the same as me I normally add a lot of beef tallow and raw cheese so oh, yeah to to make the fat content go so it's yeah very similar experience to me and what would you have to say because it's like people like freely and Dura Rider out there say the fat you eat is the fat you wear is that true yeah that's literally what everyone thinks and this is my purpose on Instagram is to convince people that that is not true. I am the living proof, right? So can you explain how I am lighter now than I ever was when I was vegan, right? <laughs> when I was vegan, I ate zero fat. I thought it was the devil. But now I worship. I, I love fat and yet I'm lighter. So just explain that to me. Yeah, exactly. So from your own personal experience, it doesn't make any sense. It's just those yeah. vegan preacher teachers out there that are just like... Yeah, just being absolutely ridiculous with their dogmatic, idealistic um, right. thoughts and beliefs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do, before we end the interview, do you think there's anything else that would be important to share with the audience that's watching that you haven't shared already so far? Um, well, so like the couple months that I've been in the carnivore community on Instagram, well, I recently started a YouTube channel, but on Instagram, I honestly learned and met so many people also on the carnivore journey. And I realized that the biggest uh, issue or setback for people who want to commit is weight gain, at least in my eyes. And I've come across a lot of ladies naturally, and their biggest issue is weight gain. You know, everybody wants to lose weight. They want to be skinny, but I guess I just want to come on here and tell everyone who's watching that weight gain is 
sometimes necessary, especially if you're a new carnivore, especially if you have a history of restricting your calories, of limiting your food intake. So don't stress about the weight gain. I personally gained 25 pounds during the first three months of carnivore, but I'm glad I went with it because all of that weight was shedded because I started to be appetite satiated. Um, I started to be really just happy with myself, with my mental health, and my metabolism, I'm sure, is much better than I was when I was vegan. So I'm just glad that I allowed my body to gain that weight because I'm so glad where I am now. It will happen naturally and it will happen if you stick to the carnivore diet. Wow, that's really good for people to hear because they might think that that is not necessarily a good thing that's happening. But like you said, for you and for many other people, that was part of the natural healing process that you needed to go through. And it's changed over a period of time where you've ended up losing it. And then you've got the full benefits. And yeah, that's that's really, really good for people to hear. And actually, I guess one last question to ask you is, have you found during your carnival journey that there's any so-called mistakes that you made or anything that you found that wasn't working for you that wasn't making you feel so good and you had to switch up any things or yeah Mm -hmm. so recently i tried some shrimp and i realized that my body really doesn't like it my eczema really flared up and that's when i started to realize there's this thing called histamine intolerance So I think that's something to be aware of. Even though you're a carnivore doesn't mean you can eat like all of the animal foods there is. Do be very slow adding in every new food, especially if you're vegan. So start minimal and then slowly, gradually add new foods one at a time because sometimes your body could really react negatively. Yeah, and I think that's a really important thing to say because I said this to people and they started to dip myself. It's like try one thing at one time, add in one thing, at one new time and then you'll know what's going to affect you if you're adding so many different things at once or eat too much of one thing at once yeah. it's just like it can make you feel a lot worse than you need to feel and it could be hard to pinpoint exactly what's affecting you in a negative way exactly yeah. yeah yeah so it's just allowed you for your own personal experience to be able to listen to your body as best as you possibly can like which is so good so it's like complete intuitive eating on a really yeah. good elimination diet where you can determine what's affecting you in a bad way and what's affecting you in a good way. Yes, exactly. I love that you also believe that it's an elimination diet. I think that's exactly why it's so great. You just start simple and slowly add back and then see what is affecting you or what is helping you. That's great. Yeah, for sure. Because I've seen it with some people that I've known that are no longer fruitarian or vegan and then they start consuming raw milk and then they're consuming beef and pork and cheese and this and yeah. so many things and I'm like whoa man no wonder why you're not feeling good this is just too much for your body and you don't know which thing is affecting you in what way and your gut microbiome does need to change to those foods as well over a period yeah. of time so you can handle them and feel good from them yeah right right yeah so yeah. just like stick to beef or stick to one and unlimited amounts I really believe just eat until you're comfortably stuffed yeah and is there any reasons like you said that there's a few different reasons you mentioned early on but maybe you can add on to it is there some very good reason as to why you predominantly eat beef and not other animal foods like other meats i stuck with beef because my taste buds like it and it's also the most satiating for me at least okay cool and yeah it seems a very uh, similar experience to me because you mentioned because the, the the call crashed a minute ago that you said that it was something that you predominantly ate in your diet prior to veganism, so it's something that you're <laughs> mostly drawn to for that reason. That's the same reason for me as well. Oh, so, great. Yeah, cool. Okay, so yeah, thank you for joining us today. Like I said, I'll put your social media links down below, so if anyone wants to get in contact with you, I highly recommend you especially go check out her Instagram. She does a lot of amazing posts on there, really, really good content. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. So everyone, before you leave, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments down below. And yeah, just make sure if you know any vegans out there not thriving, please share this with them because it may give them some insights that maybe their vegan diet is affecting their health in a negative way and maybe they can regain their health for a carnival diet. So yeah, thanks everyone for joining us and catch you later. Bye.